I really appreciate it. So I'm gonna introduce the panel. We have Mary Jane. We have Apex. <laughs> we have Chris Jones. And we have Jimmy Pereira. I wanna first say thank you. When I um, said we wanted to have this event, I ha everyone was willing. They said, sure, we're here to support the youth. We're here to empower them. Any event that we can have to empower our young people, I am all for it. So this is one way we're doing it. We're going to hear their voice of what do they care about. Um, I also want to shout out DJ Cisco. When I told you, the first thing is I was looking for a DJ, and he's not even from Brockton. He's from the North Shore, and he's like, I got you. This is a club DJ that charges hundreds of dollars to do performances. And when I said, I need a DJ, he's like, I got you. What's the date? So I really want to shout him out for coming out to Brockton and doing it willingly without even. So I want to really say thank you, because a lot of DJs are like, no, I'm a club DJ. I'm doing that. No, he was like, I got you. I'll come all the way down here. And he just flew in from Miami a couple hours ago. So that's called commitment to our young people, who's not even from this area, so I have to shout him out. Thank you, DJ Cisco, for that. <laughs> Jamming 945, I emailed them. I asked, can they come down? They said, I got you. I will send your street team to come down. I want to say thank you so much for coming with prizes. So we do have some prizes from Jamming 945 that will be given out. Huh? And they're giving out Kevin Hart tickets. So you might want to tell people that. Those are not cheap. So... That's a really big deal. Let's also shout out Brockton Youth Works. They're here in the community. I know they have a word to say. I'm going to have them speak in a little bit so they can also introduce themselves. I know David and, and Marie. I have David and Marie over there. I'm going to shout them out as well. So the first thing I want us to do is um, I know the mayor wants to speak first. So I'm going to have him speak. Is Anthony Richards in here by any chance? No. He's not here, okay. I know he's on his way. He's coming from the governor's office. He's not here yet. And Darius, thank you for coming from Lowell, right? From Lowell, the minute I said I was having this event, once again, people who are not from this area are here to support our youth. Brockton has a lot of positive things that happens, and people are coming from everywhere to see it. So shout them out for coming and supporting our young people. Okay, first I'm gonna have Mayor Carpenter speak for a moment. Our mayor is here. You clap. Thank you. I'm going to be very brief, but uh, I first of all I want to thank you guys all for participating and working with the young people in the city, and I do uh, truly appreciate your commitment to our kids, so thank you very much. Um, and actually everything that you're doing. So I brought a little citation. I thought it would be important that the city recognize uh, helping inner city kids succeed and and what the importance of the mission is so I'm going to read this for you and then I'll present it this is an official citation uh, from the city of Brockton it reads be it known that the mayor of Brockton hereby extends his appreciation to helping inner city kids succeed incorporated in recognition of providing meaningful activities for inner city kids in the Brockton area your efforts with this organization are noble your organization will be a great resource for our children to focus their energies in a positive direction. Thank you for being a leader in the community by helping inner city kids succeed. Therefore, it gives me great pleasure to present this citation to you as a symbol of our appreciation. And this uh, citation is duly signed by the mayor of the city, and it's my uh, privilege to present it to you. introduce the panel and I'm not even gonna tell you what each person does because I want them to really talk about themselves a little wait 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 <laughs> so I want them to tell you about you know who they are and what we're gonna talk about this is meant to be fun It's not something to be where we're having a serious conversation so I want everyone to just give a brief little info about who you are Hello, my name is Mary Jane. I am a student, actually, at UMass Boston in college. I um, am kind of a junior now. Yeah, a junior slash senior, not sure yet. But um, I, come fr I came from Canada, Montreal, a little city. 
and I moved about four years ago and a half um, from Canada to uh, Worcester. I don't know if you guys know, it's like an hour away. And uh, I graduated my last year of high school because I had uh, was missing one or two. And then I uh, went on to college. So that's when I went to UMass Boston. And uh, that's much about me. I'm just, you know, going to school, working a lot <laughs> to pay my bills. And um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Oh, sorry, my fault. <clears throat> How's everyone doing today? Good. Good. All right. Um, um, my name is Apex Hades, man. I'm an artist. Um, I've, I've been. I was born in Boston. I've been. Um, I came over here to, when I was five years old, and I've been in Brockton ever since. I pretty much grew up in Brockton. Um, I represent for the city. Uh, I have. A, I have a deep passion and love for the city, and um, I know. I, yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank. You. And um. And um. Um, I also represent for the um, for the Sound Lab. I don't know if you guys ever heard of that, but uh, we, yeah, all right, <laughs> my number one fan. Um, yeah, so um, what we do also over there is we try to use music uh, and to help, you know, help kids either get off the street or just help to channel their anger, whatever they have over there as well. And you know, we record music, we um, have DJ classes, we teach engineering, production, the whole nine. On top of that. And that, that was like our, our look to like try to give back on it, you know. Um, I grew up in I grew up out here and it was kinda rough, you know. I had a little troubles throughout here. I'm not gonna say I'm like a saint, but my outlook on things is to try to be positive and you know what I'm saying? And that's pretty much that's pretty much it, I guess the gist. I don't wanna talk too much, but really just I grew up out here, um, I have a love for the city and just ask me anything you wanna know later. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Chris Jones. Um, I'm actually a detective with the Randolph Police Department. Um, I'm one of the school resource officers. I work out at the middle school. Um, I grew up in Boston, was raised in Boston, moved to Randolph when I was 14 years old. Um, so anything I can do to help empower the youth and, and be some type of role model, um, I'm here and then, uh, and then I try my best to do so because I had role models growing up. Um, if I didn't, I probably could have went down the wrong path myself. So if you have any questions, feel free to to ask or ask after this, um, this panel interview. And um, I hope you guys have a good time tonight. What's going on, everybody? Make sure this is on. Hi, my name is Jimmy Pereira. And um, born and raised in the city. Uh, if you did not know, I ran for mayor last year. Uh, lost by 1,100 votes. Uh, first time ever running out for a campaign. Uh, but I also work for the Old County Planning Council, your regional planning agency. Uh, what I do, basically, I'm a community and transportation planner. So it's kind of like Sims, uh, designing cities in different towns and looking at what you can do with it or looking at transportation uh, studies as well, traffic, things of the sort. Um, but being born in the city, uh, raised in the city as well, and looking at the good, the bad, and the ugly, uh, I wanted to be a part of the change, especially uh, being part of the problem growing up. So as uh, Apex stated, I was also an uh, at-risk youth, so I was getting into trouble. Uh, ended up in the uh, Department of Youth Service system. Uh, I was locked up. I ended up in the foster care service, uh, concluding that, and uh, ended up in Springfield, Massachusetts. So I was there for about 10 years, and it came a point in time where after going to high school and getting onto a better path because of mentors and uh, uh, a support system, I went to college. I focused on geography, regional planning. I uh, graduated 2013, worked for the city of Springfield, but uh, home was calling, so I had to come back home to Brockton to uh, be with my family and be in my community. And ever since then, I've uh, been working to make change in the city. So, and please feel free to ask any questions as well. So, so when I was looking for a performer, so Poopy was supposed to perform today. But then he got called to go to Texas for something. So that's why he's not here. But I'm going to see if we could get him on FaceTime or something. But Lil Say, he's an up-and-coming artist. He's a student that 
not only is he a rapper, but he does good in school. And I will tell you how I know that. I'm the guidance counselor of the school, that's how I know. But he actually does well in school, very humble, and he's, he's really doing his thing in the rap business. So he's gonna perform for us. He's ready. You ready? I need security, can they write this down me? I just need a million. They calling me Illigan, I'm gonna speak this now, I know you're feeling it, walk in, boy, you know I'm killing it, but right, right, and my show next to me. These girls keep on touching me, got my money now, so y'all yeah, think it's bad now, getting money busting in my bag now. I'm told y'all I'll be up in a minute, but I'm up now, gotta be my truck and go bust down. I go do things, I'm saying what now? I'm just gonna get it now, I'm just gonna get it now, I'm just gonna get it now, I'm just gonna get it now. let you guys know that we are part of a big umbrella called Brock the Board Area of Workforce Investment Board and what we do at YouthWorks is we service the youth in the community so currently right now we are promoting our open mic night so this young gentleman that just spit some great fire over here we would love for you to come and perform it during school vacation and it's from five to eight and there's cash prizes first second and third and Sound Lab is collaborating with us so Part of the prize is you'll get to go in the lab and record something or go in the studio. And we also want to let you know that we also provide um, career 
specialists. So we have career specialists for any youth that are looking to do a resume, cover letters, they're looking for a job, please stop by if you're looking to work and you want to learn more about your career. So, so we have some great programs. We have an ITA program right now for any out of school youth that are interested in finding alternative programs. And we have a mentorship at the high school. So if you look for Dave, Dave is our YCC specialist at the high school and he runs a mentorship. So just look for us. We're at 34th School Street, right across from City Hall. And we're here for you guys, all right? So come on down and if you need a job, we run summer jobs too, okay? Thank you. If our DJ could drop something real quick while we get ready for the next segment. big, big deal right now. And I know even for adults, there's pressure with social media. So what we're gonna talk about is how much pressure you feel. Cause I know sometimes there's pressure with social media. Okay, raise your hand if you feel some pressure with social media. Hello, who feels pressure with social media? Nobody? Oh, you know you're not telling the truth. Seriously, nobody does? Okay, we have a panel. Anybody feel pressure with social media in any type of way? Whether it's the clothing, I need to get the latest this or do that. Okay, so I want you guys to give your perspective on that. What, is, what do you feel about social media and the impact on young people? You're in college, so you definitely could give a good yes, perspective Yes, definitely, on that. definitely. And um, it wasn't too like long that I was like a teenager where um, social media, I was like concentrated on social media and I would shut myself off of like real life settings and I would like social media, I would live, literally breathe and sleep social media. So I can definitely, by experience anyways, um, let you guys know that social media does affect, you know, teenagers and um, even like grown people. And, um, you know, the pressure to fit in certain groups that you think you want to belong in and uh, the pressure to basic basically copy or you know, enhance your self-presentation, or lower your own standards to be able to, you know, fit in that group or think you're cool and all of that. It's basically, well, for me, anyways, by experience, it really like affected my self-esteem and you know my my self-worth. I, you know, didn't know who exactly I was, and basically. Going through that really kind of made me go into like a little depression because I was thinking, okay, I have to basically do what they do and I have to, you know, on my Snapchat, just for example, I used to put my makeup on and, you know, put this little cute shirt and be like all day long in my Snapchat acting like I was doing something that was so much fun. Like I was going out with my friends, I'm going out to this party, but really my life was consisted of being in my bed and not doing anything, but acting, like creating this persona and this profile of my life and act like putting a front basically just to have the acceptance of the people I wanted to belong with. So. It's crazy, I had to ask myself like, okay, why do I need the acceptance or the likes of people that I don't even, like, the people that don't really care about me necessarily, that people that I don't even know, like, you know, half of your people, you know, let's face it, on Instagram or whatever, you don't even know them. It's strangers and, or people you probably met once and you never got, are gonna talk to them anymore, like, why do I need the likes or why does it affect me and my life and my well-being? And it's really, it's, it's part of life a little bit because we have to go through it as young teens and you know, it affects us. We want to wear the cool stuff, we want to be like our friends and we want to have a lot, we want to be popular obviously. But definitely for me, it was a wake up call and I had to just, you know, take myself out of that and remember like, okay, there's a real life setting outside of that social media. And being pressured to fit in that like little circle is not gonna make me better or it's not gonna make me a cooler person. Like knowing who I am and using social media instead of like being pressured like to fit that group but just a celebration of yourself and your self-love and your self-respect 
is way better than you know feeding for like these little legs and copying you know these things that you wouldn't do normally or just you know fitting in that circle when you, lowering your standards when it's like you can just express yourself and express who you are and I think it will be basically make you feel way better you know you walk better you breathe better you smile brighter and yeah so. let's see if the guys feel the same pressure like the females do because I feel like sometimes <laughs> we got more pressure than the guys do because we're looking at someone like Kylie Jenner I don't recognize her from a couple years ago to 20 years old now completely different person yeah first I'd like to shout out her because that was a great answer to that question honestly um, and I just wanted to shout you real quick, little say, man, you were nice up here, man. I uh, just yeah. wanted to just acknowledge that. And, um, well, see me, I'm an artist, all right? So, like, it's all about branding and, and looking a certain way. And speaking of which, uh, I'm wearing my logo from Good Money Kings. And also, I also make sure, like, when I'm going around, that I'm rocking either Sound Lab or something, so people always see what it is. Oh, I see over there with it. But um, yeah, social media. Social media is like you. Like when I first was like trying to do the music thing, and then like I was doing it before, like all the Instagram and like Facebook and all that was popping and all that. And like when like when I was doing it, Facebook was just for colleges and like people were college students, so you couldn't even get on it, on there. And then after all of a sudden, it just boomed, and it's like, oh, this is it. You know what I mean? And then. And like all the Instagram, Snapchats, all these things going on. Social media is is crazy because I, I know some people who like, I feel like they just live for it. There's like a lot of female models that I know that like, if, if um, Instagram shut down, they have no career pretty much, honestly, like for real. And like the pressure that I feel for, like I've never been a person to like, I gotta thank my father for that because I've never been a person to really like, worry too much. People pressure me like I'm trying to do the thing, you gotta look a certain way or whatever. I'm more like I don't care. Like whatever, put it up, it's fresh, boom. But like, you know, like after a while it's like every day your life or whatever, I don't feel like, oh I gotta post every day. I can do whatever. But like in the beginning I was more like, oh, I need to do this. I gotta look a certain way. It's gotta be this certain thing and you know what I mean I got people in my ear like they always wanna be a certain you gotta be this fresh and that and whatever. But like honestly what what I noticed from the social media Really, people like to see like triumph. Like, if they see you like down or something, and then un overcome it, they, it's more relatable. Cause it's like realistically, I'm not like I had a, a picture, right? I'm in a, a Maserati and all this. Now I don't own a Maserati, but the perception is like, oh, he got a Maserati. He's doing all this and that. There was, there was these girls that wanted to like come from all over. I was in New York, and they wanted to come from like two boroughs over to come chill with me just because of it. You know what I mean? And I was like, that's crazy, just material. But it's like. Would she have came that much just to just know me for me? You know what I'm saying? But the perception is, is basically become reality. What I wanna what I wanna channel to y'all is that social media is just that. You know what I mean? But a lot of people get influenced by it, and and I and people like you know there's a lot of depressed people, and they take that and they and they and they, and they pull it on themselves, and they're like that's life to them. You know what I'm saying? It's it's not real. I mean, you just make it real and all that. If someone gets more likes than you, it doesn't pay your bills. It really doesn't, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, that attention though, using that attention, it, it, using that attention is, 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 is the point, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you could take that attention and, and channel it for something good, or channel it for something, you know, positive, or promote something, and then it'll be able to work for you. But don't let that, don't let that overtake you, you know what I'm saying? I just want to make sure I say that. Let me get it back to me more personal. After the social media, what it did to me, um, yeah, there's a lot of pressure. It always wants to make you you know, it always wants to make you feel like, oh, if I'm not a certain way, I'm not at this status, then I'm no good, or I'm, I'm like that's how I was feeling. Like if I'm not a, if I don't look this way, the thing, if they, if this video doesn't come out the right way, all that. There's a lot of pressure all the time, and and if you're, you know, if you're weaker in the, in the mental, it'll definitely break you down in those situations. So what I would say to y'all is just definitely look at the social media as it's just. It's just a game, man. It's just a game out there. I don't see it like too real. Don't take it to heart, you know what I'm saying? Have fun with it. And when you do that, you start looking at it and you'll see other people that they're taking it to heart and it's like, it's not even that serious, you know what I'm saying? Don't let that control you. Like People wanna know you. They wanna know who, what's in your heart. Who are you really? They're not really like 
uh, at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, it looks good, and all this and that. You might, if you're a girl, you see the guys following, and you think that's what it is because they're liking the girl with the half naked pictures and all this and that. You know what I'm saying? But the reality is, is like they're trying to get that one thing. You know what I'm saying? They're not really trying to, you know, oh, this is what it is. They just want the trophy. They're not trying to, oh, this is my queen. This is my wife. This is just, you know what I'm saying? She's a body. You know what I'm saying? But I hate to say that. I don't know if I can say that word, whatever. But um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep it PG-13. But um, you know. As for me, uh, man, it's, it's crazy. All I say is social media, is, it's not real, man. You know what I mean? But if, it, if you use it the right way, you can make money off of it. You can promote certain things. You can put your energy out on the, on the right path. So, I mean, that's really, really it. As for me, I, I don't really care about it, but I know I got to do it because I do the music thing. And that's all I want to say. Sorry if that was that long, but... Those who did a, a good job explaining about the perceptions on social media, um, don't really want to show my age, but when um, I was on social media, it was like the whole MySpace craze was happening. I was that, that kid, that, that 17 year old kid who had two, 3,000 followers, and it was because not many people know this about me, but I did the music thing back when I was a teenager too. And um, it just, it just sometimes it, it can create a lot of drama as well because you're trying to portray this image like when you're trying to portray like a lifestyle sometimes that you don't really lead. Like there were certain, you know, problems that could have happened based upon what I was portraying and certain things I could have gotten in trouble for, but you know, obviously deaded it before it can it can get to that point. And also just in my professional career, I have social media, but I don't really post a lot of things on it because the bosses are looking, everybody's looking, everybody's watching, you know, even what you post now, 10 years from now it could come haunt you. So you just gotta be careful what you post, what you do, what you say. Um, like I said, I don't even post right now because of my professional life, but um, even when I was going through the background for this job, like they had me log in on the spot like on my Facebook, they wanted to check my stuff. I didn't even delete anything or nothing. Luckily, I didn't have anything crazy with like me drinking or smoking or anything, you know, crazy like that. But it, it just goes to show that something you might think is, is, is simple or you're just trying to make fun or you just, you know, it, it, can, it can really haunt you. And um, I've knocked on people's doors even most recently as last year because of what they post on social media, you know, even even though it might be a, a play a play gun, you know, at that point we don't know, and the police is come, you know, come knocking at your door because because somebody felt threatened, or one of your friends felt concerned, or you wanted to say you, you wanted to harm yourself, but you wasn't serious, and now you're going to the hospital because you know your parents are concerned for your mental state. You just got to be careful what you say and what you do and what you post, and um, that's all I really have to say about social media. Uh, great answers from everyone on the panel. Um, for me, it's a bit about the same thing as well, uh, looking at the pressure uh, on social media, uh, even while campaigning, knowing that you know you have to keep up with the information and put things up there. Um, but also being a father and looking at my own two children who are two and four and making sure that I'm giving them the attention rather than being on Facebook all the time and being on my phone. And it's even transcending to them as well. It's transitioning to them being on the phone as well. They're too young for, for Facebook, but they're on YouTube. They're watching the videos and whatnot. And come a few years from now, trust and believe, they'll be on Snapchat. They'll be on Instagram and whatever new app that they, they create in 2023 20, or 25 or whatever. Um, for me... It's also looking at the impact on the community, the, show, the social fabric of, it, of the community as well, because not too long ago, there were people meeting up you know, to sell items on Facebook or whatnot, and it turns into a robbery or something like that. So there's a lot of different impacts that you can see from social media. There are benefits to it as well, but you have to look at the pros and the cons and how it affects you in your daily life. If you're walking with your nose stuck in the phone, then you know, that, that's a problem because let alone getting hit by a car while you're crossing the crosswalk, but not just paying attention to your family inside the house as well. And something that you know I've learned is to 
put the phone away. Just put the phone away. But if you're if you're around people, that's the most important time for you to put the phone away because you don't know who who you're interacting with, whether it be your family members or just a random person. That person can be the person, maybe the person that interviews you a couple hours from now or a couple years from now. You know, and that person will remember. Oh, that person was just stuck into the phone. They weren't really aware of their environment, aware of their their, their surroundings and whatnot. And if we're going to transition to the future, if we're going to go forward, then we need to make sure that we're grounded on the past as well. The fact that, as you said, um, I remember MySpace. I remember Instant Messenger, a- AOL, I am, you know, and it transitioned. It kept transitioning to Facebook, to, you know, Instagram and Snapchat. And the concept has always been the same, that you're meeting somebody that's not right there in front of you. And another situation we could go right into it is online, you know, dating and all the others of meeting people and the dangers that come with that. So I've been able to see, you know, all the, the problems that come along with it as well. And it's a, it's, it's a tough concern. It's a concern. And for you all at the age that you're at now, you guys are stuck with it. And I want to see you guys because I'm still in the mix as well. I'm not that old, you know, 20, 26, but it's, it's still relevant today. And if you guys walk away with anything, not just making sure that, you know, the information is recorded, even on Snapchat, if somebody was to say, hey, I just seen him with something, they can go and retrieve that information, um, you know, with iCloud and all this other stuff that's going on as well. Just know that, make sure that you keep yourself grounded to the human being that you are. You're not who you are on Facebook or Snapchat, your, your, your bit emoji and the new gear that they got, you know, like that's not what's in your closet. So keep true to yourself, keep humble as well. And whatever image is depicted on Facebook, don't gravitate towards that gravitate to what you see in the mirror what you wake up in the mirror and look at you know and if you feel some type of way about yourself that you know you're not adequate you're looking for some type of affirmation and whatnot speak to yourself about it tell yourself i am beautiful i am great i can do whatever it is that i want you know because if you believe in yourself it doesn't matter if anybody else believes in you you have that strength you have that power and i feel like that's what a lot of people are looking for on facebook looking for that affirmation looking for that that love and whatnot and you're not going to find it on social media you're going to find it in yourself first and foremost so if you if you can walk away from anything that i say or anybody says i hope it'll be that thank you i heard some amazing answers that i also agree with with everybody saying because i don't think a lot of the teenagers understand the impact of social media. Like, I'm not gonna lie, over the summer, I, got, I discovered Snapchat, I know I'm late, I was a year late, but I discovered Snapchat, and those filters were so fun, I'm sitting here trying to filters, I'm, I'm feeling myself, I'm feeling who's looking at my picture. Like, I was really all into it to the point that my friend was like, yo, chill out. Because <laughs> it was out of control. And I had to remind myself, like, first of all, you're over 30, you're an adult, <laughs> that's number one, I don't look it, right? So then, um, the other thing was, I was like, okay, I'm also a professional, I have a career, and I work with kids, I work with students, so they can't see Miss Sermon, you know, trying to drop it like it's hot. But I'm also human to the point where I, I got caught up. I got caught up. I was in Miami over the summer, and I got caught up. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. So, I'm saying all that to say, I even have to be careful as an adult. Don't think adults are like, they don't get it too. We get it. Because we get caught up where we're like, oh, was that appropriate? Was that okay? Because I've seen little girls, and I mean, this is what scares me the most. Little girls who are posting, and they look much older, the belly's out, the boobs are, And I'm like, wait, you're 12. You're, wait, you're 15. And then you have thousands of followers, and some of them are grown men. That scares me. That scares me. Because one of these guys is going to be like, yo, I'm 16. And you're like, oh, I'm 13. A perfect match. And he's really 25. He's really 30. And this happens all the time in America. And you're looking grown, and I get it. Some of you guys are developed early. I get it. I get it. But it scares me when I see my young ladies are looking much older, and then an older man approaches you, and then you're like getting an older man, you know, you don't know their age. Or sometimes you're lying to the guy saying, yo, I'm 18, and you're really not. So then you're getting someone in trouble. And now this guy could be called a sex offender because you were like, yo, I'm 18, I'm gonna be 18. And I, trust me, I had a friend in high school who was 14, 15, and I didn't even know. She was telling guys she was 18, 19, and she was a guy that was like 10 years old. The dude never knew that she was like 14, 15. So it's real out there. So I'm telling you as young ladies, be careful with that. Be careful what you're exposing to yourself because once you put it out there, 
There's no coming back the trauma behind it. And I'm just keeping it real with you. I hear it all the time. Okay, so be very careful what you put out there. Young men, you flashing money you ain't got, people gonna try to come rob you. I see it all the time. They get a couple dollars to go pay a bill for a parent. They acting like it's money to go shopping and it's not their money. So girls are like, word, he got money. His sneakers are dope. It was a Christmas gift. <laughs> it's not his money. So don't get all caught up because it's not real. That's social media fake life. And I see it all the time. So be very careful what you've seen and what you put out there. And everyone told you that. Everyone gave you the same answer. And we're not, we're not saying it's not fun to have social media, but the thousands of strangers who are entering your life, you're showing your bedroom, you're showing when you leave your house, you're showing your parents' cars. That's not yours. You're showing the license plate. I don't show my house, I don't show my license plate. I don't need nobody knowing nothing, because they can look up information about you, and you don't even know it. So be very, very careful, okay? I don't mean to preach about it, but you know, I gotta let you guys know and keep it 100 with you, okay? <laughs> so, um, so the next question is kind of similar, so I'm not gonna really you know, go into it too much. Um, it's about, it's basically about how much, how important is it to be materialistic? Because I know middle school and high school is that age. But before we do that, I want you guys to talk among yourselves for a couple minutes. Maybe the DJ could drop something. And just talk among yourselves for a minute. Um, so, you know, just talk to yourself for a couple minutes, okay? from the young people about this question. This is a big one. So I need everyone to listen up, because this question, I want to hear your honest opinion. I don't even want to hear from the panel quiet. I want to hear from you guys. The question is, if you could write something to the president without, without being negative, what would you say? And it cannot be negative. If you could write something to the president Without being negative, what would you say? And I want your honest opinion. Hold on, I can't hear him. What's your name? Devin. He makes good memes. Okay. Anybody else? Who could tell me if they had something they could say? What would you say? I honestly don't know. I can't. Because how he is, I just can't talk about that. Anything without being negative? Nothing? Um, oh, you have a comment. Come up real quick. Let's hear what she has to say. <laughs> I will tell the president to put himself in our shoes with no money. Mm, that's a good one. Yes. That was a good one. Put your shoes. Good. I love that answer. That was good. With no money. So that was a really good one. Who could give me one? I want to hear from the fellas as well. Over here. If you could say something to the president right now without being negative, what would you say? Anybody over here? President? Yeah, the president. Without being negative, nothing? Anybody got anything what they would say? Ladies in the back, I want to hear your opinion. What would you say if you had something to say to the president without being negative? What would you say? I think I loved her answer, where she says, put your, put, your shoe, put your feet in our shoes without money. That was really good. OK, let's hear from the panel of what would they say, OK? OK. What would I say? Well, I'm kind of like, because uh, let's face it, you know, with all the negative tweets and the comments and the uh, his opinions you know on uh, immigrants or women in general or you know any kind of community lgbtq community or anything of that sort you know what can one say that has not already been said and and that's how i feel really so i don't know if i would have a conversation with him but to basically what i would do is really challenge him to again, like you said, um, sorry, I don't know your name, but uh, like you said, the, the lady said, um, basically to invite him to 
live out ju not just for one day and you know like invite his, the fox news you know shake some kind of brown baby's hand and make him feel like oh he's all about you know the people not just for one day but for like at least a week and even a week i feel like that's not enough for him but a week to live out or just you know mingle with each kind of community each culture to see what they go through on a day-to-day -day bas basis because you know to have a conversation with someone like that and i and i feel like you know you can't really have a conversation with someone that doesn't know better and he won't really whatever you could say to him he doesn't know better so he has his, his opinion so that's not going to change the thing we should do is you know or the thing he should do is educate himself on what immigrants or women go through on a day-to-day -day basis what they have to you know go through when it comes to education or um you know hospital hospitalization or you know any type any type of like you know he wants to change about anything he wants to change to go through that himself maybe will kind of spark some kind of change and then we can go ahead and have some kind of substantial conversation and see if we could change something about his opinion so that's basically what i would do <laughs> it's the wrong question for me man <laughs> straight up straight up that's the wrong question uh, the only way i could like i can't even front i would just if, if i was for the president it's like um have some racial integrity man you know what i mean like um bring us together rather than trying to you know, separate us or make us feel, you know, worse in our situations than we already do, you know? I'm, I'm, I'm from Haitian descent, you know what I mean? And I got people in my family over there, you know, my Zoes, and like, you know, you cutting off visas and they're asking, trying to come over and, you know, that's crazy to me, you know? Um, it's, yeah, man, just have some integrity. I, I can't, I can't. I don't have too much positive or, or much to say for that. You know, he got there, you know, there was mad, like, votes that, you know, seemed that they didn't count or funny stuff and all that when it comes to the politics. And it's just like, I don't know, I'm trying to pull some positive on there. Or like, it's, yeah, I'm, I, I swear to you, I'm trying to, like, uh, you know what I mean? I'm not feeling him, you know what I mean? And he probably, he, he don't care. It don't, it don't really matter. And that's the problem. That's the problem there. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, I could say I don't like it. I could say whatever about him, and it ain't gonna change nothing. It feels like, and why do, why should I feel like that? You know what I'm saying? That that that's an issue. You know what I'm saying? You know the power should be with the people, but yet it's not, and it just feels like the you know like with capitalism. I could go on for day. I'm trying not to do this, man. You know, it just seems like the, there's a, just a bigger separation on it, and I don't really. I don't really have anything real positive to say. I don't. I'm just not gonna try to. I don't. I don't, man. I can't front, man. You know what I mean? Like, put someone else in the office, man. I don't really like to discuss politics too much, but um, I agree with what Apex said about the, you know, some racial sensitivity. Um, being, coming from Jamaican descent, you know, my grandparents came from Jamaica with nothing, you know? And I used to go back as a kid and I used to see how they used to live and, you know, no street lights, no, no electricity, you know, kids walking barefoot, you know, you sitting there, you have to grow your own food, no running water, can't even drink the water out there. And um, it just humbles you a little bit and, you know, he's the president, but at the same time, he doesn't know what, you know, a lot of our, a lot of us or a lot of our family members had to go through to, to get to where they're at. Um, we, don't, we don't leave our, our home countries to come here and start trouble and, and, or to commit crime, as he says, you know, especially when he talks about like the Mexican people, how they come here, they commit crime, they sell drugs. That's not, that's not, you know, that's not the purpose of coming here. No matter what race, no matter what background you are, there's criminals everywhere, you know, and, and you can't be ignorant to that. And it's just, 
he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth and he would never understand where any of us came from or had to do where we what or had to go through what we what we went through to get to where we're at. So I mean, it's only four years, that's all I can say. So. <laughs> All right, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Um, my sentiments kind of uh, sound the same as everyone else. Um, you know, the guys, he, he, the president grew up how he grew up. His father, he doesn't fall far from the tree, um, you know, whether it be housing, lawsuits, things of the sort. So this is how he grew up, really. So um, anything that I say or wouldn't really change that. So for me, I'll see you in 2020 is all I can say, really. So next time election comes, make sure that, you know, we take part in that and make sure that we learn not just about voting, but about the Electoral College and what it means to be a delegate and all of the intricate information that comes along with that. Because it's not just put your vote in the box. You could also show up to the caucus and all the other things that associate with being associated with the Democratic or Republican Party and things like that, too. So see you in 2020. Hi. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, two things. One. We have a representative from the governor's office, um, Anthony Richards. He came down straight from the state house down here, so I want to introduce him. Anthony, can you guys come down? Um, so I wanted to make sure that I came out and presented a citation on behalf of the governor's office. Um, I know the mayor was here earlier. He's been super helpful in a number of different things. Um, but you guys inspire me. I, I come from the world of youth development, um, manage large nonprofits and work with young people. I feel more comfortable with you guys than I do every day at work. So this is pretty cool to come out. So let me read this quickly and make sure um, after I read it that we give uh, Cassie like a nice applause, like a good one, not like a corny like school type of one, but like like one you would do if, if I came in here and brought Drake or something in here. Folks would be, you know what I mean? Folks would be like, like, like a good one. So on behalf of the citizens of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I am pleased to confer upon you this governor's citation in recognition of your preparedness of inner city youth in Brockton and the surrounding areas to excel through events on a daily basis, a number of different events through academically, socially. Um, on this day, the 15th day of February. Look, you ain't even looking. You're about to give it up. All right. Helping inner city kids succeed. Let's give it up. event. I, the goal is to have three more this year. By the end of the year, we're going to have a banquet to recognize our young people in the community. That is the goal. And we're going to do it. I want us to be able to recognize our young people in the community by having and, you know, getting them to speak and know their area and recognizing you as the people of our community. So thank you so much. Um, right now, we already did that question, right? We want to do an open forum open forum. What are some questions you have for the panel? We have four different people, four different diverse backgrounds. I want you to be able to ask them any questions. So anybody have any questions you want to ask them? And just keep it real. Do not feel like I'm scared to ask a question. No. This is your spot to be able to speak. <laughs> Anybody? No question? Wait, you said ask them questions? Yeah, ask them a question. Here, here's the mic. Don't be shy. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a question. Right. Anything, anything you want to ask any of them? Here. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, um, I have a question for Jimmy. Yes, and you said you ran for uh, um, mayor, right? Right. So how was your experience with that? Thanks, um, great question. It, it was a great experience. I learned a lot. Um, I kind of seen what it means to run for office and you know the good, the bad, and the ugly that goes along with it. Um, it's something that I want to educate other people on how to do it because you know for me and not having a big support when I first went out there, 
um i was out there basically naked um you know without the funds and the guidance but you know a lot of it i learned by just reading whether it be on um online or reading books or different people that ran for different offices as well mayor jack units wrote a book on you know run for mayor as well too so uh to be someone that grew up in the city i grew up on tremont street green street uh, Roosevelt Heights, Eastside Projects, and, you know, to run for mayor, it's like none of my friends, none, whether it be in Springfield or Brockton, have ever done something at that capacity. So um, for me, it was something that I felt, and not to say that I can say I don't like to my own horn, but people say that I've introduced something to a community that never has done anything like that. Now people want to know, hey, how do you run for mayor? So um, for me, I think it's, it's the beginning of something bigger than, you know, losing an election. So... Yeah, it was a good experience overall. So. Anybody else, thank you for being brave and asking the first question. Who's next? Who's next? No questions? That was a really good question. Anybody else? Yes. I, I, I would, yes. For the people. For me, um, I'm a community transportation planner. And we, we're big on code of ethics and making sure that you know you do it for the people. And I always grew up. Wanting to help people because, um, as, as Mr. Jones said as well, I didn't have that support system growing up um, until I went to the Department of Youth Services. My mom worked two or three jobs, so she wasn't able to do it. My dad, um, both of them immigrated from Cape Verde, so they didn't know this country a lot. Like A lot of different families in this, in this, in this community aren't aware of the system, so I want to be that person that helps that bridging the gap between you know people that come from different communities or just people that live here in the community as well because as a community planner you work for everybody you don't discriminate and you know you'll be held accountable if you do that as well and I think that's what we need as as whether it be a mayor or someone in that position um, someone that's going to be down on earth and is going to make sure that they're going to put the people first because how I see it is if you help other people no matter what, you'll be fine. You know, God will look at you and say, all right, you know, you've helped my people, so I know that I'll take care of you. And that's just how I see it as far as being a political or community leader, so. Oh, question for Chris. Okay, what made you decide to go to the Randolph as Well, like I briefly mentioned earlier, I grew up in, um, I didn't move to Randolph till I was like almost 15 years old. Um, I grew up in the Fields Corner section of Dorchester, so it was kind of rough. Um, a lot of gang activity, a lot of drugs. Um, single mom, you know, father wasn't there. And um, I wanted to become a cop because I had uh, this program called the Great Program. It was like for gang resistance. So the the officer who was teaching it, who was a Boston police officer, and um, he basically was my role model, you know? So he um, basically said, you can go the other route, you know, you don't have to be a part of that crowd. And um, I, that just stuck with me. So I wanted to, to make a difference within my community because I had a lot, a lot of friends and family members who went down the wrong path, some who are, you know, deceased now. So I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to head down that path. So, me becoming a police officer was to really help and 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 you know give back to to the community and the youth, just like that police officer gave back to me. You know, granted it's not, it's not in in Boston where I grew up, but you know I did spend you know some of my teenage years in Randolph and went to school out here. Oh, I, I went Randolph and um, this is why I chose this position and I'm and I'm glad it opened up for me. So that's the reason why I chose to become a police officer. Any other questions? Oh, there's two? Okay. Come on, come on, come on. And we have our DJs. So if you have questions about being a DJ or anything, so, you know, definitely you can ask questions as well. Go on. I got a question for Apex. What type of music do you make? Thank you, thank you. I feel like I'm an impact rap artist, but I, I do a lot of trap music and um, music just related to my, my upcoming struggle. Okay. <laughs> 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 we'll say, you gonna perform for us again? Oh, that was it, because he did a whole mess of music? You 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> um. Any. Oh. Yes. Thank you. Um. It sounds as if you guys had um, mentors and role models. Uh, what advice would you give the youth that don't have mentors or role models, anybody to look up to? Um, what advice would you give them if they're struggling um, in school, at home, or you know wherever? And second part of the question is, um, besides these meetings and music and things that you guys do, what hands-on things do you do with the youth to actually show that you guys are there for the youth, like a, you know, for those that don't read, you know, for those that are more hands-on and things. That was a good question. Oh, one more question. Oh, sorry. I can't remember the first two. Okay, last one. It's quick. Um, Mary Jane, why did you leave Canada? Why? All right, so uh, why did I leave Canada? I feel like, you know, coming from <laughs> somewhere that you see America on TV and you think it's such a great place, you know, and like the kind of the American dream and more opportunities obviously opened for me. Moving to America was not really like, well, it was a decision of my mind. I was moving with my parent, uh, my mom, and um, whether or not, like, can't, like, obviously people would think like Canada is better, I'm not gonna lie, okay? But um, America does open some kind of opportunities if you work very, very hard. And me being a communication major in college, I, communication really in Canada is like, you know, anyways, from what I wanna do, I really want to um, like open, like do broadcasting or anything in, PR, like public relations or advertising. And I feel like America really opens that door for me where it's kind of, you're seen worldwide. And you know, for things like this as well, you know, to open up a little bit more for me. And if I can make like some kind of change or impact other people, because me being, you know, um, from that experience and, and just basically experiencing all of that, all of everything we just talked about, and being a teen where, you know, I didn't have much and I was, you know, with the social media being impacted by that and peer pressure and all of that, to, f to just motivate other people to, you know, yeah, go to school and, and you know, you could do stuff like that as well You're by yourself, you know? So moving to America was really for that opportunity, really, basically. Do you guys wanna? Yeah. So um, to answer the young lady's question about mentor and if you don't have one, for me, um, if you don't have one, find one, look for one. And it doesn't have to be someone that you know is right next to you or someone that you can reach out to. Um, it could be through phone calls, it could be through even YouTube videos. If you know someone you know that has the same life as you or someone that you look up to, you know, chances are, especially in this day and age, they have YouTube videos of interviews where you can listen to their life experiences as well um, and take pointers from it because everyone has a story to tell. It's just, are you listening to it? You know, and are you finding similarities in it as well? Like Warren Buffett, he's a millionaire. He's not gonna take his time out of the day and come sit down with me and mentor me, but he has books, he has videos, he has, you know, podcasts, everything, anything that you can find to take information from it. And it doesn't have to be just one. It could be as many people as you want. and um, that's the beauty of living life here on Earth. You know, we have everything is recorded for one. You know, like not just Facebook, Snapchat, but the Library of Congress, um, libraries in general. You're able to get the information there, and you could get it through reading. You could be the person to help somebody else out, and you learn from that. I do. I do want to just add to that. Th those were really great answers, and. Um, <laughs> I do agree with the fact that you have to want to not like change but better yourself basically uh, first and then as um, Jimmy said reach out you know you have a guidance counselor as you know Cassie in your school you have any type of friends that can help you or a parent or anybody that can try to help you and see you know clearer and start to build goals for yourself. My parents did not go to college, but I knew I was going to college. And that was a goal for me. 
It may not be your goal, but that was my goal. Some people's goal is to start a business. I respect that. Everyone has a gift. If you're a cook, be the best cook you can be. If you want to be an educator, be the best you can be. You want to do the best carpentry work, do it. Like Whatever is your passion, be passionate about it and make people respect your craft. 